Awesome. We are now live on Facebook. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Facebook Live. My name is Maria Mejia, and with me today is... Alicia Pradam. Yep. It's so great to be here talking to all you guys. Uh, the topic for today is one of the seven costly mistakes uh, that people make when filing their taxes. Each time I say that or think about it, I think of, you know, the seven deadly sins or something. <laughs> No, the thought crosses my mind too. <laughs> so uh, the question or the one of the mistakes that we want to cover today is missing the opportunity of income splitting. So Alicia, who is just taking a or just started taking a tax course, do you know what income splitting is? Yes. Uh, so income splitting is essentially moving income around within your family. So let's say one of the members of your family uh, is in a higher tax bracket, then you are able to split that income uh, with a family member so that your family's income tax uh, is lower in general. Yep. So if, you know, if your husband is the one that works and you are the one that stays home and takes care of the kids, he's obviously going to be in a higher tax bracket. And then your family overall is going to be, you know, taxed at that higher level. Whereas if you're able to kind of share the wealth, as it were, uh, between the two of you or other family members, you know, your overall tax bracket or your marginal tax rate will be much, much lower. Right. Yep. So there's a lot of legal ways to do this. And we're not going to be talking about any illegal ways to um, do any income splitting. Um, but the first one that people think about when they hear income splitting is usually with seniors or people 65 and older, um, where they have to fill out a tax form called the T, what is it again? Uh, 1032. 1032. I knew there was a one in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the 1032, where you just report how much of your pension income you're splitting with your spouse. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that includes, you know, your retirement, your CPP, any life insurance, um, stuff like that. Not life insurance, but there's a retirement called the life life income. Oh my goodness, I can't speak today. I can't think. So, you know, all those different retirement benefits you can split up to fifty percent with your partner. Right. Exactly. Um, one of the other ways that you can do income splitting is uh, your spouse can give you a loan. Uh, there are a few stipulations in order for that to uh, actually take the income from one partner and give it to the other. Uh, so first of all, there does need to be at least the prescribed interest rate set by the CRA. Uh, so in this case, right now, it's at 1%, which is very low. It was up at to 2% in 2018, and it just came down in 2020, um, and we still have it, so that's great. Um, so as long as you have the 1% interest rate on the loan that you're giving to your partner or family member, um, and you also pay the interest on that loan at least 30 days before the end of that tax year, then the person who received the loan can use that as their income and the other income is taken off of the higher tax bracket part. Yeah. yeah. So to kind of make that legal, you would need to have some kind of written uh, information, some documents saying here's the loan amount, here's the prescribed interest rate, and, you know, the signatures of the two people, you know, make it as legal as possible, as well as the loan, the money from the loan has to be used in some kind of investment, whether that be in like a, an actual investment account uh, where you earn interest, so like a savings account or a bond account, um, or in a business itself. So if your partner or your spouse is self-employed, that could you can give them a loan to kind of start up their business and they'll be like paying you as if it was a normal loan from like a bank or something. Right, exactly. Yeah, and then your partner can claim the interest that's paid 
and then you claim the interest that's paid to you and it kind of all evens out and lowers the taxes overall. Right, exactly. So those are two ways. Now there is another way. Maria, do you want to elaborate on that one? Uh, yeah. So you might have to give me a hint on what this one is. Um, <laughs> so if you're a business owner, right? Oh, and, yes. Yes, if you have family. You so, can. you know, you're self-employed and you decide to, um, you can employ a family member, whether that be, you know, your partner or even your children, if they're old enough to help you legitimately in your business. You know, you can't have your three-year-old toddler helping you in your construction company. You know, that's, that's really not legit at all. Um, it has to be relatively legitimate work that's being done. And if they are being paid at a reasonable rate, um, so you can just hire them and put them on the books as your employee. Uh, or if you want to pay them through dividends, you can register them as a shareholder in your company. Um, dividends are taxed uh, differently than normal wages are, so you do have to keep that in mind. Um, but overall, the company is paying the taxes if you do it that way. Um, as well as you do need to keep in mind that it, dividends are not counted for certain tax benefits, such as, you know, the working income tax benefit. Uh, so you do have to do the calculations, figure out what's better, having them on payroll, having them as a contractor and paying them self-employment, or having them as a shareholder and paying them through dividends. Exactly. So the, those are three great ways that if you're trying to do a bit of tax planning, um, then consider those different options. And if one of them does work for you, then it's a way that you can try to save a bit of money as a family. Yeah. So talk, speak to a tax professional because uh, every, every family has different situations. You know, what works for your friend or your neighbor down the street might not be, you know, the most tax beneficial for you and your family. So, you know, talk to a professional, someone who files taxes regularly. Um, that way they can see, you know, what your situation is and tell you what the best course of action is for you. Definitely. Yep. Are there any other potentially missed uh, tax splitting? Oh, no, not missed tax splitting, but a few... Um, maybe some things that people might think might count as income splitting. Right. Uh, so if you receive a gift, a monetary gift from your family, that does not count. Uh, they could give you $2,000, let's say. That still counts as their income, not yours. So that one does not qualify. Um, also splitting expenses. So let's say the scenario we talked about earlier, where one partner works full time, the other one stays at home. Um, you can't have the one partner claim all of the expenses for the house and the other one not claim anything. If it is a shared home, they do need to be shared expenses. So that's, that's not a way that you can lower your income bracket. Yeah, because most of the time your home expenses aren't counted for your taxes. Um, but as we said, again, it depends on your situation. If, you know, the partner that's at home is a self-employed person, then it might be beneficial for you to be the one claiming all the expenses. Um, so whoever, really what you want to do is whoever has the higher income will be in the higher tax bracket. And think of, okay, what can we do to kind of shift that income to the lower income person in the family? Um, and so we kind of usually talk about income splitting when it comes to, you know, husbands, wives, partners, um, spouses, things like that. But it can also be with if you are a college student and you have a parent, or if you're a parent and you have a college student, you can shift the income kind of up or down instead of horizontally. Right. Exactly. It's not limited just to spouses. <laughs> yeah. So keep that all in mind because uh, I know a lot of families, especially ones who have parents who own their own businesses and so have large income, 
uh, they want to sh kind of shift that income to their children in a legitimate manner. Um, so, you know, have that in mind as well. Exactly. And <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> right. Um, I think we covered a lot of the, the basic information. As you mentioned, it's, it's really important to make sure you do talk to the tax professional before you make any definitive steps towards income splitting because there are regulations and rules in place. So you want to make sure you're following everything by the book. Um, but it's important to know that there are options out there. Yeah. And, you know, talk to that professional early on in the year. So I know, you know, it's tax filing season right now. People are thinking, oh, I got to, you know, file my taxes. How much taxes am I going to pay? Well, it's kind of too late to, you know, make plans on the income splitting for 2021. But for 2022, you know, the year is still young. Talk to that professional and say, okay, here's what our situation is what can we do to lower that income? So talk to them early on in the year and then also throughout the year because your situation might change. Maybe at the beginning of the year, one's unemployed, one's working, but then the middle of the year, the one that's unemployed decides, you know, start their own business. Well, that's going to potentially significantly impact your tax situation. So having that communication with a professional throughout the year and keeping them updated with any, you know, financial changes uh, will definitely help you. That way you can mitigate if your situation will impact your, you know, your tax bracket. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, if that's all of our wisdom for today, that sounds good to me. <laughs> So thank you everyone for, for watching us. And if you have any, you know, maybe tax mistakes or tax questions, feel free to send us a message here on Facebook or on YouTube or wherever else you are watching us. And remember to like, share, and subscribe. Um, and we're always here to help you and share this information with other people that you might know that might need a tip or two on how to um, help their families during this tax season. Exactly. And we're always available for you to reach out one-on-one -on -one as well. So we encourage that. Yeah. So feel free. No, no questions, a dumb question. Um, we've heard it all. So let us know. Uh, okay. Thank you for joining us and catchphrase. <laughs> Success is easier than you think. All you have to do is ask us. Awesome. So we will see you all next time in our next Facebook Live. Bye, everyone.